Fantastic. All right. So here we go again. We're going to do a painting pour and we're going to do it on a board this time. You can get these boards um, almost anywhere online or if you have one around your house and you're like, oh, I want to paint something super cool on a board. Um, that would be super easy. The I have mine sitting in a box because of the drippage and I'm going to put cups underneath it to hold it up so that I can see it a little bit better, make it easy, easy peasy Japanesey to do. Okay, then you set it in that box. It's kind of important that you make sure it's level. Um, well, that's lucky. That's lucky. Hey, how's it going, Tara? Fantastic. Okay, so we want to make sure it's level. We're going to start off with the board. We're going to do something cool. We're going to add two cups. We're going to be two parts to the pour. There's going to be the river part, and then there's going to be the mountain part. Hey, Sharon, how's it going? Woohoo! <laughs> okay, so we're going to first have to fill up both cups with paint. And I already mixed some paint up. I use 50% paint and 50% Floetrol, and I make it so the paint is nice and runny, kind of like hot honey. Okay, so let's pour some, let's get some paint in there in the cup, a little bit of it. We're gonna mix it together and let it mix amongst itself. The actual Floetrol is what makes, gives it a lot of cells on its own. If you, however, one of those people that really like the cells, the little holes that pop within the paint, you can add some silicone oil. It's the oil that your mom used, used to um, do the, sewing machine so when she had her sewing machine she had that little tiny bottle of oil that's the oil or you could almost use any oil i've seen people use wd-40 <laughs> out in the garage and they just spray a little bit in there anyway you can see the cells are already starting to form in the paint you get a lot more with the oil however you just want to use a teeny tiny bit of oil because it will make too many so it's almost like too much cherry on top of the cake something or maybe too much frosting it's if if you like a lot, then you can use it more than that, but a little bit goes a long way. Okay, so here's some red. Let's start off. I don't really know exactly. Now that was kind of thick, but we're gonna add some red. We're gonna add some yellow. Oh yeah. And then we're gonna add some orange. Not super sure how this is going to turn out. Those are kind of thick together. So I'm going to add a little bit more of a red again. Oh, I saw some driplets in there. Okay, well, <laughs> you don't want the driplets. However, they sneak in there. So you might have to blow them out again later. Let me see if you can see this even better. Okay, I'm going to add a little more orange. There's going to be a lot of background. I did this painting one other time and I don't remember exactly how I did it, so I'm sort of winging it. However, I've had people order the print and because they didn't take such a good picture, I'm now redoing it again. Okay, so now this one, I'm gonna add a little bit more. I wanna make sure I have enough inside the pore, so I'm gonna add a little bit more of that light blue, nice and runny, and then a little bit more of that dark blue. And we're gonna let it sort of figure itself out. Okay, so I'm not gonna mix it at all. I'm just gonna leave it in the cup um, to let it mix itself. And you can already start to see the paint is starting to mix because of the flow trawl. So what we're gonna do, so we're gonna grab this and we're gonna make two parts to the painting. Still not totally sure how it's gonna work out, but that's okay. Now I know that the paint is going to continue to mix and continue to mix all the while I'm still paying attention to the flow of the paint so that I'm not just splashing it on there which is a different effect. I want a little tiny bit of unity amongst the paint. I'm trying to make sure I get all the paint out of there and I'm going to roll that around before I put any blue on there. I'm gonna roll it around and let the drippings kind of roll over the edge just a little bit. Just a little bit over the edge. It looks super cool. I'm not trying to get too much. I want the paint to stay on there. And then I'm gonna let it roll down over. 
over this edge. It looks really cool when it goes over the edge. Now this is just a board. So I'm gonna show you the edge. You can kind of see it there. I'm gonna let it run down this way a little tiny bit to get that one far edge and the corner. Let's see if I got my edge. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, I'm gonna set it back down. Make sure all those drippings go over the edge. Now I'm gonna grab that blue. I'm gonna rinse off my hand and a little bucket of water so I can try and keep it clean. Okay, so look and you can see the cells are already starting to form. Look at the cells. Okay, so let's add some of that blue and let's make like a river kind of a scene. So maybe the river starts here, goes down there and goes off. If you've ever seen the Snake River, it is amazing. I wanna make sure that that light blue gets in there. I notice that the light blue, getting it all in there, make sure any extra paint goes all off the edge. So this is what the Snake River looks like from the sky. It's super windy. If you've ever traveled down it, it is beautiful, beautiful country. Okay, so we got some nice paint on there. We can see the beautiful cells are starting to form already. Now I'm gonna grab my trusty spoon and I'm gonna move the paint around on to make sure that it goes all the way up and over that edge. I want it to make sure to paint that whole bottom or side edge, mostly to seal your surface. It really does help to seal your surface. Now, you don't want to over mix the paint. So every time you touch the paint, it's touching the spoon. You just want to wipe your spoon off because we're going to go right back to creating some sort of a flow as if the river goes in that direction and we may even spring off and go this way because we know that the river does do that it has lots of twists and turns and look at those beautiful cells starting to spring up all over the place okay so now the light blue is sitting a lot on top of the dark blue super pretty however I want some more of that dark blue to show through, so I'm gonna add just the pure dark blue and drizzle it. Just drizzle it, drizzle it, drizzle it, and then drizzle it over here a little bit, and maybe a little bit more down here, so a separate drizzle, so we have several currents. Oh yeah, okay. Grab my spoon and move those around a little bit. You can also, for fun, use a straw. and keep it moving. Beautiful. And then you have a nice, see how it folds in? It looks like moving water. Nice, now it looks like a river with a beautiful background. You have a few drops over in here which actually look kind of cool. So there, in just a very short amount of time, you've created a really pretty pour. You're gonna have to let it rest and then you can put a finish on it if you want, but it makes a beautiful scene. And you guys have a great day.